Thank you very much for listening. I'm Guillermo Garcia Manero from the Department of Leukemia at MD Anderson Cancer Center, where I serve as the chief of the section of myelodysplastic syndrome. In the next few minutes, I'm going to discuss with you some of the uh, uh, more important uh, presentations, in my opinion, uh, in MDS at the ASH meeting uh, this year in San Diego in 2016. So the first uh, presentation I want to highlight was presented by uh, Dr. Montalbran Bravo from MD Anderson, where he showed data uh, in terms of the impact of uh, mutations, and more importantly, the number of mutations in the prognosis and response to hypomethylating agents in patients with MDS. A number of other publications and presentations have shown or are showing similar results, but this is a concept that I think is important uh, in which uh, not only particular mutations, but the number of mutations seem to be very important when predicting outcomes with patients with MDS. The next presentation refers to what I think actually is a transformative concept. This was pioneered by uh, uh, two groups in Boston and most recently uh, by investigators at Washington University where they showed that patients with therapy-related myeloid neoplasm had evidence of coronal hematopoiesis, meaning mutations in their blood before they got chemo and radiation therapy. At this ASH meeting, two oral presentations, one from uh, Dr. Takahashi uh, from the MD Anderson and one from Dr. Padron from the Moffitt Cancer Center expanded on this initial observation from the Washington University group, and they clearly demonstrate that a large majority of patients with therapy-related uh, MDS or AML have antecedent evidence of clonal hematopoiesis before they get any chemo or radiation therapy for their uh, solid tumor cancers or lymphoma. I think this data is very important because, first of all, it shows evidence that perhaps the paradigm of uh, chemo and radiation therapy causing DNA uh, damage may not be as clear as it may be more related to changes in cellular dynamics. And second, it may give us uh, information or potential to develop some type of a screening type of uh, approach in patients at high risk for developing therapy-related uh, leukemia that, as all of you know, has a very poor prognosis. In terms of uh, new therapies, we saw actually quite a bit at the meeting this year. In the next uh, uh, presentation, uh, there is data that I presented uh, with a new compound known as OPN305. This is a monoclonal antibody against TOLA receptor 2. And the data presented at the meeting showed that this agent that inhibits innate immunity signaling had quite, a little, uh, had quite significant activity particularly in red cell transfusion independency in patients with lower risk MDS, but that had failed a hypomethylating agent. Another presentation of interest was also presented by our group and is the uh, initial pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic data with Aztec 727 uh, in patients with MDS. Uh, this new compound is an oral derivative of the sativin combined with a sativin deaminase inhibitor. This combination actually allows for excellent PK and PD uh, profile with oral desitabin and evidence that this oral uh, uh, compound actually may be as active as parenteral desitabin. I think this is a very important concept because it may allow for development of total oral uh, treatment programs for our patients with myelodysplastic syndrome. In terms of also other hypomethylating agents in the next presentation, again, Dr. Montalbran Bravo presented initial results from a phase two study of wadecitabine or SGI-110 in MDS. Uh, as you know, wadecitabine is a second generation uh, hypomethylating agent, also a derivative of decitabine. And uh, Dr. Montalbran Bravo showed evidence of clinical activity and safety uh, in patients with MDS uh, using this compound as first line therapy. And again, this drug uh, is also being tested in a number of clinical uh, phase three trials, for both in MDS and in AML. So it's an important data. To conclude my presentation, I would like to highlight briefly uh, two more studies. One actually also uh, refers to the use of uh, immune therapy uh, along the lines of the TOLA receptor 2 presentation earlier, but this time with inhibitors of PD-1 and CTLA-4. So the first one was a presentation uh, by a, a multicenter trial of the use of pembrolizumab in patients with MDS after HMA uh, failure. This was a pilot trial. It's called Keynote 013. Uh, we treated 27 patients, and the response rate was low with the pembrolizumab, but particularly in patients with intermediate 1 disease, we're seeing uh, an impact in, in survival that was not expected with uh, three of these patients actually being long-term survivals of this disease with HMA failure. That, I think, is a very positive signal. 
signal. We followed this trial with a study performed at MD Anderson of the combination of nivolumab or ipilimumab with or without uh, esacitidine in patients with uh, myelodysplastic syndrome, either up front or after HMA failure. And the data has a short follow-up, but we're starting to see significant responses with single-agent ipilimumab. This is of importance. And trends in uh, survival that actually better than expected, particularly in the subset of patients with HMA uh, failure. And to conclude on the last uh, presentation, I'd like to highlight a talk that was given during the AML session, but with a compound that will have an application in MDS that is oral esacitidine or CC486, where we uh, showed actually that this drug that is given for 14 or 21 days actually could uh, rescue patients that had failed uh, a traditional hypomethylating agent such as esacitidine and esacitabine. So in summary, I think that the work in MDS started to translate into new uh, assays for our patients in terms of prognosis, and more importantly, new uh, therapies. And I'm I'm grateful for this opportunity and thank you for listening to the presentation.